Hey kids, welcome back to some more science, some more ocean creature science. You may have noticed that I have a super cool hat on my head, my crown. There's something leaping out of it. Do, 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 do. Whales and dolphins. That's because this week we're going to talk about whales and dolphins. I've lumped these two animals together because, hey, fun fact, dolphins are whales, but whales aren't dolphins. It kind of has to do with the size, I guess. Dolphins are a lot smaller than whales, but they share pretty much all the characteristics of them, with a few exceptions. Both animals are mammals. Their babies are born alive. They use lungs to breathe, and their babies drink milk. Both animals live in water. They don't live on land. Both animals are really cool and really interesting. So today we're going to read a book about some whales and dolphins. We're going to watch some videos, especially about one of my favorites, the narwhal. It's a whale that actually has what looks like a unicorn horn. You're going to make a super cool leaping whale dolphin hat. And I have a theme snack for you that doesn't involve any baking, but it's super fun anyway. So let's get started. Whales and dolphins are cool. And science is cool. Whales and Dolphins by Judy Allen and Mike Bostock. What are whales and dolphins? Whales and dolphins are sea animals. They are warm-blooded mammals, just like some land animals. Their entire lives are spent in the water, but they breathe air. They can swim fast, and they can dive deep. And that's a picture of a sperm whale. Where do whales and dolphins live? Do they get cold in the water? Are whales and dolphins fish? Some live in icy oceans and some live in warm oceans, and there are dolphins who live in rivers. Whales and dolphins have a thick layer under their skin called blubber, and that keeps them warm. So are whales and dolphins fish? No. Fish have blood that is as cold as the sea, and they breathe in air from the water. Fish and dolphins also swim in very different ways. Fish have a tail on the back that moves side to side, whereas dolphins have a fin that go up and down, and there's a bottlenose dolphin. Breathing. Whales and dolphins have to swim to the surface in order to breathe air. They breathe air through blowholes on the top of their head. Some whales dive down very, very deep and have to rise up a long way to breathe in the air. And that's a picture of the blue whale, the biggest whale. How long can whales hold their breath when they're underwater? Does water go down their blowholes when they dive? Can you see them breathing? Some large whales can stay underwater for two hours, possibly longer. No, water doesn't go down their blowholes. They close their blowholes when they dive. Otherwise, they would drown. And if a whale is large, we can actually see the spout of steam breath as it blows it out before it breathes back in. You can see them breathing out their blowhole. You'll see bubbles. See? There's a spotted dolphin. So, unlike people and other mammals, dolphins and whales do not breathe out of their mouth. They breathe out of the hole in their head. Their mouth is used for eating. Babies. Baby whales and dolphins are called calves. Each mother only has one calf at a time. She gives birth close to the surface of the water so that the calf can easily breathe its first breath of air. That's a spinner dolphin, mommy and its calf. How do the babies learn to swim? How big are the baby whales and dolphins? Do their mothers feed them? The babies can swim as soon as they are born, although they may be a little unsteady at first. The babies can be quite large. Usually the mommy is only three times as big as her calf, and the calves grow fast. At first, the babies live on their mother's milk. She will soon teach them what to eat so that they can eat food when they're older. There's a picture of a pilot whale calf feeding. One baby's drinking milk, and the other one is chasing a squid to eat when he's bigger. Food. Most whales and dolphins eat fish. Some dolphins hunt fish in groups. They swim around the fish to make them move closer together so they can be easier to catch. Baleen whales eat tiny creatures called plankton. And on the bottom there, there is a killer whale eating a seal. What is a killer whale or orca? Do dolphins spit out the fish bones? How do baleen whales catch their plankton? Killer whales or orcas are the largest dolphins. They eat fish, birds, and even seals. No, dolphins do not spit out the bones. They swallow the fish whole. Dolphins can't chew. And as for the baleen whale, they suck in water that's full of plankton, and then they push out all the water and swallow the plankton. That's a baleen whale on the side. The baleen is that comb-like stuff in its mouth. It opens its mouth, sucks in water and plankton, closes its mouth, 
pushes the water out through the comb stuff, and the plankton stays inside for them to eat. Talking. Whales and dolphins talk to each other in their own way. Sometimes they wave to each other with their flippers or tails. Dolphins click, whistle, and squeak. Beluga whales make faces, and humpback whales sing. How do dolphins learn to click, whistle, and speak? Do humpback whales sing all the time? Why do beluga whales make funny faces? Baby dolphins learn to talk by copying their mothers. Humpback whales sing when they want to attract a mate. Some scientists think that bait beluga whales may talk by making faces. And you can see a beluga whale is making all sorts of silly faces. They're also called white whales. They eat fish, squid, and crabs, and they live in Arctic waters. Traveling. Some whales make long journeys called migrations. The greatest traveler is the humpback whale. Groups of humpback whales spend the summer in icy oceans and then swim to warmer waters in the winter. There's humpback whales in their icy waters. Why do some whales swim so far? Why don't whales get lost on their journey? And how do we know how far whales and dolphins have traveled? There's more food to eat in icy oceans, but the whales like to have their babies in the warm water. Nobody knows why they don't get lost. The oceans are their world, and I guess they understand it. And as for knowing how far they travel, we can see them from boats and sometimes from the shore. We can also track dolphins from the patterns on their fins. Each dolphin has a different pattern on its fin. Do whales and dolphins play? There is still a lot we don't know about whales and dolphins, but we are certain that they play. Whales breach, and spinner dolphins leap out of the water and spin and somersault. Bull riding and wake riding looks fun, too, where they're chasing behind the boat. How do whales breach? Do spinner dolphins really spin? What are bull riding and wake riding? Whales jump out of the water and then fall back with a huge splash. That's called breaching. The spinner dolphin can leap up, up, up into the air and turn seven times before it falls back into the ocean. Bow riding is being carried along by the front wave of a moving boat. Wake riding is traveling in the wake behind the boat. And there's a spinner dolphin spinning. The end. Well, that book had some amazing facts on whales and dolphins. There's a few more things I want to touch on with some extra videos. That book mentioned breaching, when a whale jumps up out of the water and then flops back down. What does that look like? This is what it looks like. That book also talked about how whales and dolphins talk to each other. Here's a video of what those two things sound like. that book did not talk about is the narwhal. The narwhal is the whale that has a like unicorn looking horn coming out of it, which is actually a tooth. I have a video that talks about narwhals. Male narwhals can weigh nearly two tons. With bodies up to 16 feet long, but it's their tusks that make them weird among whales. The tusk is actually a single gigantic tooth that can reach 10 feet in length. But why swing such a big sword? Scientists aren't exactly sure. Narwhals are an animal of misinformation and mystery dating back to the Middle Ages when their tusks were fobbed off to royalty as unicorn horns. Is it used to impale their prey? No. Narwhals can dive more than a half mile down to the ocean floor to feast on cod, squid, and cuttlefish. No stabbing or goring required. Is it used to poke around on that dark ocean floor? Possible, but improbable. Narwhals, like their dolphin cousins, use sonar to guide them through the depths. The tusk is jam-packed with nerve endings. Some scientists argue it acts as some kind of sensor. That would be one insightful incisor. But it's the males who predominantly sport the tusks. 
If the tusks had a survival advantage, the females would also be long in the tooth. Some scientists believe this means the tusk serves the same function as a deer's antlers or a teenager's hot rod, a way to show who's the fittest male around. Males occasionally cross swords. That's tickling the ivories. But whether it's a joust or a jaw session is anybody's guess. And the narwhals aren't telling. Narwhals are so cool. In fact, I have a silly song about a narwhal. Let's listen. Narwhal eating a bagel. Narwhal eating a bagel. Found it floating right on the ocean. It's a narwhal eating a bagel. Narwhal eating a bagel. Narwhal eating a bagel. Tastes so nice under the ice. It's a narwhal eating a bagel. The captain, he knocked over his lunch and it fell into the sea. The narwhal found the bagel and it made him so happy. The polar bear got the pudding cup, but it wasn't satisfying. The narwhal got the bagel, now can't you see him smiling? Narwhal eating a bagel, narwhal eating a bagel. That tasty smear made the narwhal cheer, it's a narwhal eating a bagel. The giant squid removed the lid from the can of onion dip. The jellyfish ate an apple slice and the shark got the crackers and cheese. The narwhal found the bagel and it made him so happy. Ooh. Random cat. Oh yeah. Let's go over this story one more time. The captain, he knocked over his lunch and it fell into the sea. The narwhal found the bagel and it made him so happy. The polar bear got the pudding cup, but it wasn't satisfying. The narwhal got the bagel. Now can't you see him smiling? The walrus found the string cheese, and the penguin got the chips. The giant squid removed the lid from the can of onion dip. The jellyfish ate an apple slice, and the shark got the crackers and cheese. The narwhal found the bagel, and it made him so happy. Narwhal. Not, 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 narwhal. beluga whales, but it didn't really talk a whole lot about them. I want to talk some more about beluga whales. Here's a little video on beluga whales. <laughs> They're so cute. Most young belugas are gray. They take about 10 years to turn white. Adults only grow to three or four meters long. They are creatures of ice and cold. Most belugas live thousands of kilometers north of the St. Lawrence River. By nature, they are an arctic species. From their skin color to their thick blubber to the lack of a dorsal fin that lets them swim easily under ice, belugas belong in the north. They live all around the northern fringes of the planet, most in the arctic labyrinth of islands of North America, from Hudson Bay almost to the pole. Belugas are among the noisiest of whales. A few of their sounds can be heard on the surface. But when scientists listen underwater with hydrophones, they record a huge variety of calls, whistles, and clicks. You'll need this template. Take a screenshot and print it out. If you're at school, your teacher will have it. The first thing we need to do to make our super awesome hat is we need to color in our little guys here. We've got an orca and then we've got some sort of generic dolphin. 
do whatever you want. I'm going to make my orca look like an orca, but I'm going to make my dolphin rainbow colors because I like rainbows. So let's get coloring. Okay, there's my picture. Of course, there's no such thing as a rainbow dolphin, but hey, this is my art project. I can do whatever I want. Next, we're going to color our sea. So if you have blue paper and you want to just cut that out to be your crown, the part that's going to go around your head, that's fine. I don't happen to have that, so I'm going to color my sea. And I'm actually going to maybe add some fish, too. So I've got two pieces of paper because my head's kind of big. If you've got a small head, you might only need one. I'm going to put them together, and then I want my C to be kind of wavy. So I'm just going to, well, maybe the best way to do this is fold it in half this way so I make sure it's even. Just make a light line. That's going to be my halfway. And now I'm sort of just going to not really cut on the line, make it a little bit wavy, wiggle, 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 but stay close to that line so it's kind of even. There we go. And then I'm going to have some hats here. Now I'm going to decorate these to look like under the sea. I think I'm gonna add a giant octopus. Okay, I've made two panels for my hat. I've got my squid, a sea turtle, and a fish on that one. And then on this one, I put a shark, a fish, a crabby, and my octopus. And so I'm gonna, now I'm going to cut this guy out. Forgot to do that. I'm gonna cut these out. That's our next step. Okay, there they are. I didn't cut super close to the edge because I don't wanna take a chance I'm gonna cut off his fin. I've been doing this class long enough to know that's exactly what's going to happen for a lot of you. So if you're not such a super great cutter, just get close. That's good enough for now. And if you want to get a little closer, go right ahead, but keep some tape nearby just in case you lop your fins off. All right, now we're going to put our hat together. So first I'm going to match up my panels here and either tape or glue, or in my case, because I want to be able to put it on my head right away, I'm going to staple it. Okay, and then I got to measure it against my head. It's going to be a little small for me because I have a big head. So I have an extra panel and I'm not going to need much of it. That should do it. But before I put it together all the way, I have to get my, my whale and dolphin on there. So I'm going to take these and put them so I'm looking at the white side. And then I'm going to take a popsicle stick you can use a wide one or a skinny one, doesn't matter, or any kind of stick. And I'm gonna lay that on there and just tape it on. And the same with my other one. Okay, and now I'm gonna tape them on my hat. Now I want it to be jumping on the side where the water is, so don't put it on the white part. I'm gonna put it over here. And then you can make it so it's just on the water like that but I like it to be up a little bit. So I'm gonna put it up a little bit and you can even tilt it a little bit so it looks like he's really jumping out of the water there. That would look cool. And just tape it down. Same with this one. Jumpy, jumpy. Okay, and now I'm gonna fit it on my head. Okay, I got my cool hat with my jumping dolphin. And my jumping whale, looking good. Hope yours looks good too. Special snack time. For your first special theme snack, you're going to be making a banana dolphin. You'll need this template, so take a screenshot, print it out. In addition to the template, you'll need a banana or three, tape, crayons, scissors, and a marker that can draw on a banana. Your template can make three banana dolphins, so select one set of parts and color them in whatever color you want them to be. Then cut them out. Finally, use your tape to tape the dorsal fin on the top, the flippers on the side, and the fluke on the back. Use your marker to put some eyes on the front and maybe a smile on the end to make a mouth. There you go, a banana dolphin. Your second theme snack is even easier, a bagel, because narwhal eating a bagel, right? Play the song and eat some bagels. Mmm. Well, that's all I have this week on whales and dolphins. Whales and dolphins are really cool. And you know what? Science is really cool. <laughs>